Hi, welcome to episode 122 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Twitter and Instagram. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my hand spun yarns, and there are a few mugs and cozies left. And finally, we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea, and we are getting close to the end of our January craft log. So hi, how are you? I hope you have had a wonderful week. This is Saturday, uh, January 28th. I am recording a day early because tomorrow I am going to our Spinning Sunday event, and I will be gone all day and there won't be very much light uh, by the time I get home. So, um, well, there shouldn't be any light by the time I get home. So I thought I would record a day early. Um, so that is me. The week has been pretty good. Um, I wasn't feeling well on Thursday, so I stayed home and um, I actually got a lot of knitting done, which was kind of nice. Um, and I, that's pretty much it. I wanted to thank you all who took the time to leave me some feedback last week. I appreciated your comments and your support. And um, let's start the podcast. So today I am drinking a tea from Tea Pigs. It is apple and cinnamon. Um, and that is where it's from, Tea Pigs. They are at teapigs.com. And um, the apple and cinnamon tea contains apple, cinnamon, apple pomace, roasted chicory root, citric acid, blackberry leaves, and other natural flavorings. Um, and I have drunk this one before on the podcast, and today I am drinking it in my Carl Mountford Batman Skills mug. Um, and if you are interested in purchasing one of his prints, um, I know Batman and I think the Thor knitting is also available um, on Society6. You can get it on a variety of things, mugs, sweatshirts, um, whatever. Um, and this is this is a good tea. I have tried this before. I think the first time on the podcast several weeks ago. I do like um, tea pigs because um, a lot of their um, well, a lot of their teas are herbal, um, as is this one. Um, but they list their ingredients, and then on a lot of them, they list the percentages of the ingredients. And on some of them, um, if it's like a what was the one? I think it was a ginger mint tea. It was like 50% ginger and 50% mint and there was nothing else in it. This one has a few other things in it, um, but like I said, their teas are pretty um, pure. Anyway, so I really like their teas. That's tea pigs. And that's super hot. I think I just burned my mouth. Not as much fun. <laughs> so um, let's turn to the rest of the podcast. I am wearing my Ravel cardigan. I believe it is by Miriam Fulton. I knit this a couple of years ago for a um, National Knit a Sweater Month in November. Um, it is the it is Madeline Tosh in the DK base and the colorway is, I believe, Shire. Um, and I had a great time knitting it. I actually made mods to include the cables on the sleeves. Um, there are more notes on my project page on Ravelry. And I will put a link to that in the show notes. So let's talk about what I've been knitting this week. After we spoke last week, I finished the um, Valentine's Day socks for Miles and for Roxy, and those are boxed up, ready to be sent out on Monday morning to their new home. Um, so that is sort of my finished object, although I'm not counting it as one um, in this week's podcast because I don't have it to show you. So let's talk about the other things I have been working on. The first thing I have been working on is my Faro pullover sweater. That's by Amy Christophers, and I am uh, knitting it in Rhinebeck yarn that I got from Green Mountain Spinnery. It is their weekend wool um, in the colorway teal. And when we last left, I was getting close to, um, I was within just a couple rows of where I was going to break for the neck. And I have done that. As you remember, this is being knit cuffed cuff. So I knit the cuff and the sleeve, and then I worked on the body for a while, and then this week I broke for the neck in the middle, and I am currently working on the back. I have the back about half done, um, and I so I have um, about half again more rows, and then, um, then I will break and work on the front piece for those rows, and then it will join back together and um, finish at the sleeve. It is starting to um, look a little bit like a sweater um, because I can fold it. Like I said, this is knit flat, um, cuff to cuff, 
So you can see this is the sleeve right here, and then we get into the body um, where I don't have much on the front, but I have the back. Um, the length is fairly short. I had a couple of people ask me if this was a sweater for me. Um, and I have two things. First of all is one, it will stretch once we block it because it has cables and lace. Um, so it is kind of scrunched up. The second is that um, once I block it and seam it, then um, the sweater also calls for ribbing around the bottom. So once I seam the sides, I will go ahead and pick up and do ribbing um, all the way around. It is a pullover. Um, and then my final note is that the sweater actually does hit at like the waist slash high hip. Um, it is not meant to be a super long sweater. It is a little bit cropped. So um, that is my progress. I hope to get more done this week, although I have a couple projects I need to be working on. So I don't know if that will happen, um, but I am really enjoying knitting that. I am knitting that um, on my US size eight, that's 5.0 millimeters marbles. Um, I love these. These are actually uh, fixed circulars. They also have interchangeable circulars and I have a set of the DPNs. Um, the marbles are acrylic and they are really cool and kind of marbly looking. And um, I really, really like knitting with them. They are fast becoming my new favorite needle to knit with. Um, and what was I gonna say? Oh, and every um, size is a different color. So the blues are, uh, the blues are eights, uh, sevens are um, a neon green, sixes are kind of a shrimpy pink color. Um, and those are the sizes that I have used the most. So those are the ones I know by heart. Um, but yeah, I really, really like these and would recommend them. So that is the Faro pullover. And that is my progress on that. I am really, um, well, I'm not gonna make it by the end of January, but I am positive that I'm going to be done by the end of February um, because after uh, I have two things that I kind of need to be working on this week. And after that, um, I am not letting myself work on anything else or cast on anything else until I finish this sweater. Um, because even though I only started it on the needles a few weeks ago, um, it is Aaron weight and I should be finishing this faster than I am. So. That is um, what I've mostly been working on this week and what I will continue to work on. Second up this week is that I noticed this week that Sally from Wool Diaries declared that this weekend, the 27th, 28th, and 29th, um, which is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was going to be a uh, scrappy or um, sock blanket madness weekend. And um, actually when I was home on Thursday, I pulled out my new blanket and spent a little time on it. Oh, and I lost the current ball, but as long as I can, let me find the loop and make sure that it's, yeah, okay. So um, I have added a bunch to this. It is still not super wide um, or super um, long. What I have done is I am doing the, um, Lucy uh, of Attic 24, the Ripple How To, and I have been using all the little bits of leftovers that I have, um, and I have been using magic knots. You'll see a few ends. For the most part, I have been weaving in as I go. Um, so the ones you'll see are just for the later ones, and I love this. This is turning it into like a crazy, colorful, fun, ripply blanket, um, and I love this and um, so I have been working on it a little bit this week because of the um, impetus to work on it and I am loving it so so much um, and it will be forever before it's done. Um, it is quite wide so it will be great to have on the couch. This is definitely for me even though it's crazy colorful and fun and certainly could be a kid's blanket um, and it reminds me of all the projects that I have knit and um, it is just great. I, I mean, it's basically another cozy memories blanket, just a different pattern. And um, I decided to start this one after everyone was starting the granny score blankets. Um, for some reason, I don't find um, the granny row squares um, aesthetically pleasing. I don't know why. It's just not something that I really enjoy creating, um, but I really do enjoy the ripple. So um, that is what I'm doing. And I don't think the camera is showing the brightness of all the colors. I will have to take some photos soon, um, but that is what I am doing. And of course, no areas are exactly the same because as I'm switching colors and some of them are super short, um, like there are just different colors in different areas and I love it. And I can't get enough of it, nor can I decide which section is really my favorite. So that is what I have going on here, and I will continue to work on that this weekend um, for Blanket Madness, even though it's not a mitered square 
um, and I probably won't submit anything. I mean, really, Sally's Blanket Madness weekends, um, or Blanket Madness events, usually just have bragging rights if you've added the most stuff in, and I'm sure I won't have added the most stuff in, and it's harder to to see measurable progress even though I could do it by rows. It's hard to, harder to see measurable progress um, when you're doing like a ripple as opposed to squares where you can count the number of squares you've added, um, but I don't care because I love it. It's fabulous. So that is what I am also working on. Um, yesterday night, and I'm sorry, I should have pulled this out of the plastic. Yesterday um, e afternoon, evening at the post office, I or my post office box, I picked up um, I picked up some yarn that I had ordered. Um, I am test knitting the hat that I showed you last week, um, which is the feminist hat by uh, the fierce feminist hat by Kiki Hall. Um, and I ordered the same colors that she um, talked about using in her pattern because I, you know, I didn't even think about it. I just, I was like, okay, she has a light pink, a dark pink, and a black. I'll just order those. Um, and then I started seeing people like mixing up the colors on the hat and I decided that I wanted to mix them up a little bit, but I had already ordered them. Um, so yeah. Um, I chose to order, the hat calls for a DK weight yarn. I chose to order Knit Picks Capra. Um, Capra DK, which is, um, it is a DK weight. It is 85% merino wool, 15% cashmere, 123 yards to 50 grams. Um, I really only needed one skein of each, so I ordered a light pink, which is flamingo, and then I ordered a dark pink, which is fuchsia, and then I ordered a black, which is black. Um, so these are my three colors. And I cast on last night and I got through the, um, just the ribbing. I decided to make the main color of my hat black and then I'm going to use the hot pink and the light pink as uh, the contrast colors for the words and such. And um, it looked to me like Kiki held um, one strand of the light pink and one strand of the dark pink together when she cast on, which just gave the hat um, a really nice edge. I went ahead and just held the dark pink, so mine has a dark pink cast on row, and then I picked up and started knitting. Um, so I will have that, and I plan to work on this this week and finish it. I'm, um, the pattern has already been released, but she was looking for some people to um, knit it just to make sure that it was correct, and so I am working on a test knit for her this week and will finish this hat. So that is um, another thing that I'm knitting. And the final thing that I'm going to work on this week, and um, as I said, the yarn came yesterday, so I haven't done it yet, is I need to wind up this pretty skein. I also bought this from Knit Picks. This is a skein of their Stroll Fingering Weight. Um, it is, I think, one of their tonals. Um, I can't remember. It is, I mean, it's slightly variegated. It is in the colorway. Yeah, it is one of their tonals. It's called Deep Waters. And it has a variety, I'm not sure how well it will show up on the camera, it has a variety of um, blues and some purples. And I am going to use this to test knit. Um, Mina has a baby sweater um, that she showed on her podcast, and um, I am one of the test knitters for it. I am going to knit a three to six month size for Miles. Um, so I hope to get most of the knitting done for that in the coming week, um, because she wants to get a good turnaround on that so she can release the pattern. So I will be working on the hat and the sweater this week um, and then hopefully my sweater in some spare time and tonight and tomorrow some on the blanket. So I have plenty of work cut out for me. So that is the knitting news. Um, I am still hoping to do a Find Your Fade shawl, um, but I am trying to finish the two knits that I need to finish this week in my sweater before I do that. So um, hopefully, 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 I will be able to finish all of that in the next couple weeks so I can cast on some new things. I have a pair of socks I would like to do um, with a pattern from one of my books for the um, knit, Use Your Books Cal. Um, that Tracy Schnuffeltier and the uh, Passionate Spinner podcast is working on. I have a pair of socks and a, a skein of sock yarn all wound up and ready to go for that. Um, and I would like to cast on a Find Your Fade shawl. And I also think I probably have a couple of review yarns coming. Um, one is probably a sock yarn and another um, might be some lace weight. So I need to think about what I am going to do with those. Obviously with the sock yarn, I'll probably just do a pair of socks. Um, but I got to think about what it is I want to do with those. So those are the up and coming knits. Um, let me take one more sip of tea and then let's go on to the spins. 
So last week I showed you a kind of crazy braid. It wasn't a very me braid. It was a gift. Um, and it was pink and blue and some purple and it was called Sex and Candy. Um, and it was done by Tempted Dye Works and I finished plying it today. Um, and it's a little hard to see. Um, there are definitely some purple parts and some blue parts and some pink parts and some parts where it mixes. Um, what I did was I spun this fractally, which means I tore the um, braid in half and one half I broke up into smaller strips and uh, spun those smaller strips so I would get quick repeats of color. And then the second half I spun straight through without dividing it. Um, and I did that because as I was starting to watch the short repeats of the pink and blue and purple, I was afraid that um, doing all short repeats and making it barber pole would actually make it look um, very almost uh, one colored. I don't really know how to explain it, but I was afraid that like all the blue and pink parts and purple parts would all kind of blend together and make kind of one kind of mottled semi solid looking skein. Um, and I didn't really want that. So um, what I did was I spun it fractally so that there are some runs where the blue and the blue line up, the purple and the purple line up, the pink and the pink line up, and then there are some runs where they're interspersed, um, just so that I could maintain a little bit of the purity of the colors. So that is the finished bobbin. Um, like I said, it's hard to see. I have no idea what weight. It looks like I probably got um, probably a sport weight. So I'm gonna guess maybe three or 350 yards, but I don't really know because I haven't um, wound it off yet. Um, I do know it is 3.9 ounces, but that is um, all I know. This was a Merino alpaca, I'm sorry, an alpaca Merino silk, um, which would make a lovely chalette. It would drape really beautifully. Um, the alpaca would also make um, really warm socks. Um, so I think uh, you could definitely go with that. Um, so this, I'm going to finish this one up tonight. I just need to pull it off and soak it. And then Monday or Tuesday, um, I will photo and it will go up in the shop. So that is Tempted Alpaca Merino Silk in Sex and Candy. And that brings me to what I will spin this week. I went searching through the stash for um, an older braid because as you know, I'm trying to spin from stash this year and unearth some things. And um, what I picked out was a Hello Yarn Club colorway from December 2012. Um, I was not in the club then, so my assumption is that I probably bought this fiber on D-Stash sometime in 2013. But this is the Troll colorway on Organic Polworth. It has yellows and greens and blues and purples and a little bit of pink. And it's a very, um, it's not quite a rainbow, but it sort of kind of has the rainbow colors in it. I would just kind of call it a darker rainbow because um, it's got a little bit of pink and yellow and kind of an ochre brown orange. And then we've got these little bits of blue and green and like a whole variety of purples. And it kind of does look a little bit like rainbow colors, but it's a much darker rainbow. So um, that is on Polworth. And as I said, that is the colorway troll. And that is what I will be spinning this week. And then it will be, um, this will also be a braid for the shop. So um, that is what I will work on this week. Tomorrow at Spinsters, um, our, our group, our spinning group, Sunday spinning group, um, which is kind of Western, I'm sorry, Eastern Kansas in the middle of Kansas. We meet um, one Sunday each month and we're called the Spinsters. Um, at Spinsters tomorrow, I will be bringing, um, I have the last two ounces for an eight ounce bobbin on my mini spinner of the uh, mixed Corydale, the Corydale Cross um, in, I think it was stone? Smoke. In smoke from Fat Cat Knits. That's for my hap shawl. Um, and as soon as I finish that um, bobbin, I will be able to ply the first four ounces off and then I have four more ounces to spin. Um, but so I want to get through those two ounces tomorrow. So I'm taking the mini spinner with me and then I will start um, on the Hello Yarn on Tuesday, on um, Monday. So um, hopefully next weekend I will have a couple skeins to show you. Um, the smoke obviously being for me and not for the shop, but also the troll skein. So that brings me to almost the end of things. Um, just as an announcement, we have the uh, Selfish Craft Along going on in the group. That will end um, on the 31st, which is Tuesday. I will announce prizes Wednesday or Thursday by random number generator. So if you knit or crocheted, sewed, crafted, 
um, spun, wove anything for yourself in the month of January. Um, and as many objects as you did, you can post them in the finished objects thread, which is in the Ravelry group, the corner of Knit and T. Um, and I will use random number generator to draw two prize winners. I showed the prize last week, or the prizes last week on the podcast. The first was a Downton Abbey mug and um, some Downton Abbey tea. And the second prize was a skein of sock yarn that I got when traveling through Colorado. So um, those are the prizes. And like I said, I will announce on Ravelry um, on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, if I haven't heard from the prize winners, I will announce um, also on the podcast next week. So that is going to do it for me today. I hope that you have had a wonderful weekend and uh, lots of crafting. And I will say until I see you again, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping. And I'll see you next time. Bye.